in this contract. Cliff, you've always been known as the guy that brought, that made the big Gilmore trade and Sundin trade, but can you talk a little bit about, and you mentioned this a little bit earlier, but uh, how the dynamics have changed about making a deal going into this trade deadline. It can, it's no longer just uh, a handful of players for a handful of players. No, that's right. And, uh, you know, uh, the system has shown that there's a frenzy, though, the last week, starting about a week to 10 days prior to the deadline. And usually the amount of, of trades that are uh, consummated are depend on some team starting the ball rolling and doing something that four other teams are vying for that position and they want to jump in and try and improve their teams too. So, uh, you know, just what might be able to be accomplished uh, this year at the trade deadline, honestly, you're looking into a crystal ball because whatever you do has to make sense. And... Uh, the goal is to improve the hockey club, both for the present and the future. And you have to assess what opportunities you have and, and how appealing they may or may not be. So uh, we'll find out before the 26th of February. Richard, I don't want to uh, belabor the point about autonomy, but with trade deadlines and, and things of that nature, some of these things can be very time sensitive. Is one of your managers able then to make a decision, to make a player move, to make a trade, and then report back to the board, or does it have to go to the board first? Uh, over the history of the company, uh, we've done a bit of both. If it's, if it's a, a very large trade like Vince Carter, uh, that the board uh, wanted to hear the thinking on that one. Uh, a great deal of the others, uh, you know, the, if, if it was a time frame where there were board meetings, he might say, geez, I'm thinking about this. But the next thing they might hear about it is on their BlackBerry, frankly. Richard here in the second row. Uh, a lot of the dynamic for this club seems to be the attempt to stay competitive now and rebuild for the future, and that doesn't seem to have worked in this case, and it doesn't seem to have worked over a long term in the National Hockey League. Has this company accepted the fact that it may need to miss the playoffs for a year, two years, three years, and as part of a targeted rebuilding from the ground up, or is that still not an option? From Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. Uh, we will look to, uh, in the short term, the interim, to, for Cliff's direction on that, what's the best way to realize our ambitions, and then the next person, um, whatever our general managers think, um, we have the appetite to do that. Cliff. What are your views on no trade contracts? A number of your veteran players that you're inheriting now have long-term uh, deals with no trade uh, addendums to them. Well, uh, Steve, it, it seems to be an issue uh, across the board in the league today. Uh, I, I don't have the figures, but uh, there are a substantial number uh, of players, uh, particularly the better players on the respective teams that, that have that no-trade clause in there uh, uh, to protect their own interest. But I think you'll find that in most cases that... All it is is basically giving the player a say on where he might be going. And in the end, generally, there can be accommodation. Cliff, you seem to be in a, <clears throat> a very enviable position recently, living in a beautiful part of the country, collecting uh, some salary from the Phoenix Coyotes. It would have been a situation where you, you probably could have just gone off and enjoyed the rest of your life. What attracted you? What brought you back to this situation? Uh, Howie, uh, it's a challenge. Uh, uh, I, I feel I still want to be involved, and this is a great situation to become involved and, and hopefully to make an impact on getting the club moving the way uh, where we want it to go. And, and the fact that I'm a lousy golfer not getting any better made the decision easier. <laughs> Richard. Uh, Cl Cliff, um, will you be bringing anybody with you immediately to run this team? How will the management structure work at this point? Uh, not, not at this stage. The, uh, the structure will pretty well stay in place till the balance of the year. And uh, at that time, either uh, myself or if the new person is on board by then, will be involved in whatever decisions have to be made. Any other questions? Yeah, actually, uh, 
Richard, there's a perception among Leaf fans that the board of this, the Leafs, is not really committed to the Leafs winning a Stanley Cup. There's an impression among fans that this team is run more for profit than it is for the glory of the team. Can you assure fans that this is a, a new t starting point, a new page for this team? Um, I know that's out there. Um, I can tell you that's not the case. These are business people, but they're fans. They're in our arena every night. Uh, they think like fans on occasion and hurt like fans on occasion. So they want to win for that reason. But winning is good business. I mean, if you get through the, into the Stanley Cup, whether you win or lose, but let's just say you just get to the Stanley Cup, it's probably, you know, can be 12 to 16 home games. Do the math on that, let alone when you go to renew your broadcast deals, your sweet deals, your corporate pon partnerships. Winning is good business. This team wants to win. This organization wants to win because they're fans and it's good business. Cliff, when you were hired, right here, when you were hired in 1991, you were one of the most successful GMs in the business, one of the most experienced. You were succeeded by two men, Ken Dryden and John Ferguson, who had no experience at all in the job. What should the next general manager, president, what should he look like? What's the broad outline? What should be done in Toronto? I would hope uh, that there will be someone out there that will be an appealing candidate who uh, has had tremendous success in the NHL, has a track record, and you know that if that person would have any interest in coming here, that you know that he, the chances of him succeeding are very, very good. All right, uh, at this point in time, we're going to break down into uh, one on ones. Richard Petty and uh, Cliff Fletcher, the new interim general manager of the Toronto Maple Police. We welcome you back to the Sports Center newsroom. Rod Smith, along with our hockey insider, Darren Drager. Well, let's begin with how this came about. I mean, it had been rumored for the yeah. past week that this was going to happen, it finally did. Was it actually finalized last night or this morning? Well, it depends on who you talk to, but there's no question that the decision to remove John Ferguson as general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs was made last night, and really all there was left was uh, the true negotiation with Cliff Fletcher.